In today's video, I'll be talking about how I trained for a sub 17 5K. So I'll go over my training log for the past four months where I had the goal of sub 17 for the 5K. And what happened was I ended up running 17.06 for 5K. And this was after 16 weeks of training. And basically my fitness progressed from a 5.13 one mile, which is worth about about 18 minutes for 5k, maybe a little bit faster. Um, so basically I improved almost a minute in the 5k uh, over the course of 16 weeks. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you exactly how I assembled my training plan uh, with all, all the workouts. So, let, so let's get, let's get uh, started. So let me first talk a little bit about my general approach. And so my general approach is I, is I broke down the training cycle into three uh, distinct phases. So the first phase was for easy, uh, easy running and base building, basically just building up my mileage to a sustainable level that I wanted to hit for this cycle. So that was about 45 miles a week was my goal to, to maintain for this training block. So that's about four weeks. And then after that, I had basically a general aerobic conditioning phase where I was doing a lot of uh, like longer tempos and just like a lot of good aerobic running, just working on general fitness. And that, that lasted about six weeks. And then I had a six week phase where I was focused, my workouts shifted to being very, very 5K specific. So a lot of hard intervals, a lot of tempo runs at lactic threshold, but first, Easy runs and strides. So let's look at the calendar. The first four weeks of this plan, uh, I just built up my mileage up to that 45 miles per week mark. And I started doing uh, some strides in week uh, three and week four. And so the strides are just, just you know, 20 second bouts, 20 second runs uh, at about mile pace effort. I usually did six of these on any given day. And this was usually uh, near the end of my easy run for that day. Uh, just a quick note, if you see any of these uh, days in the calendar where, that are blank, that just means that that was an easy day uh, for me, just easy, an easy run or an off day. All right, so first four weeks, I just built up to that 45 miles per week level. I was feeling pretty good. I'd done some strides. I was just getting myself ready for uh, workouts. And then after the first four weeks, I went into my second phase and I started adding marathon pace tempo runs and what are called critical velocity intervals. All right, so first, for the marathon pace tempo run, this is a longer tempo run that is run about a minute per mile slower than your 5K pace, um, which should be about your marathon pace if you, if you run marathons. I, I don't, I, I've never run a marathon before, so, it's not technically marathon pace, but it's it's a very aerobic effort. It's very comfortable. Uh, you can go several miles at this effort. And so what I did was I used um, the Tin Man running calculator, which I'll put a link in the description below, to figure out what my marathon pace range should be. And so that gave me a range of 631 to 621 per mile. I used the... Um, 513 one mile time trial as sort of like a fitness marker for myself. And so I was running those marathon pace tempos somewhere in the 620s basically per mile. Then the critical velocity intervals, these are uh, intervals that usually about three to four minutes long and run at your 30 minute race pace or approximately 10K pace. So for, for me, that was I, my target during this cycle was about between 336 and 340 per kilometer. In mile pace, that's between 547 and 555. Faster than lactic threshold, but slower than your 5K pace. And so what doing this type of training does 
is it just builds your general uh, aerobic fitness. It pushes your lactic threshold a little bit higher as well, and just gets you ready for like any sort of distance race. All right, so you can see that each week, starting in week five, I would do one marathon pace tempo and then one critical velocity workout each week. And so the way I progressed this is basically I built up the volume over time. So for the marathon pace tempo, I started off with a four mile tempo and then I sort of plateaued and, and I was doing five miles at marathon pace. For the critical velocity intervals, um, you can see that I started off with three times four minutes and then one times three minutes. So that would be uh, 15 minutes of volume and then I got that up to 20 minutes of CV running by week eight. Now you'll notice that I had a blank week here on week seven. My hamstring was really bothering me a lot during that week. So I, I, I was basically very cautious and I backed off the mileage from 45 miles a week to 35 miles a week that week. Got rid of the workouts to let my hamstring recover. And thankfully I was able to get over it basically in just that week. All right, so this cycle was um, actually six weeks long. So you can see these are the first four weeks and then the, la the weeks nine and 10 kind of finished up that sort of uh, aerobic you know, cycle, that base phase, if you will. And I did a 3K time trial on week 10. So the end of week 10, I did a 3K time trial just to, you know, after already doing six weeks of training, six weeks of workouts, I wanted to, I wanted to see if my fitness had progressed at all, to see if I was on the right track. And I, and I ended up running 10, 11 for 3K. And so that was actually a, a very good improvement over that 513 one mile uh, a couple, uh, you know, 12 weeks ago. So that showed me I was on the right track. 10, 11 for 3K is sub 17 5K pace. And so that week I ended up taking the marathon pace tempo, cut it, I, I combined it with the CV intervals on like one day. So I got a little bit of each of those stimuluses. Um, each of those stimuli? Yeah, stimuli. I got each, I got a stimulus of marathon pace tempo and a stimulus of uh, critical velocity tra uh, training. But I kept the overall volume of that workout about the same. So you can see that I reduced the, the I cut the CV workout in half, I cut the marathon pace tempo in half, and then I combined them together, which you know is a great way sometimes. Um, it's it's really I think it's really important to 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 run some workouts where you're touching on more than one pace. It allows your body to sort of adjust to that change of pace. And it allows you to get a lot of different things done, accomplished in only one workout. All right, so after week 10, basically I, I just done some general aerobic uh, training and I hadn't done any 5K specific work. So I was really excited to start adding in some faster tempo runs and some faster intervals. So the next two components would be, uh, well, first thing I added was, was a threshold pace tempo run and a run in, and run in economy repeats. So first, the threshold pace tempo, that's a, a tempo run at your one hour race pace. And so for me, based off of the uh, 3000 meters or 3K that I ran in 1011, that should give me a threshold pace of between 559 and 607 per mile. And then for the run and economy repeats, these are just short, fast intervals at mile pace. Uh, so I was trying to run like 200s, for example, in about 36 to 38 seconds per, you know, 200 meter rep. So what I would usually do is I would do a threshold pace tempo and then run an economy repeats on the same day in this, as the same workout. So I would do the tempo first and then I would do the 200s afterwards and that would teach my body to be able to run fast when I'm tired. Right, so it's really important to try to get your body to run fast when you're tired because that's what you have to do in a race. And so you can see week 11, week 12, I was doing some sort of threshold running. So, the, so week 11 was three times one mile with one minute rest. And then I did, right after it, I did four times 200 meters uh, with 200 meter jog in between. You can see that's 559 average for the one miles and 37 average for the 200s. 
the next week, the way I pro the way I progressed, and you always want to have a progression in your training, so that you're you're building. You know, it's it's this concept of progressive overload, right? Your body gets stronger by doing a little bit more every time you go out there. The first week I did three times one mile. The next week I just did three miles, no stopping, straight through. So a three mile tempo run, uh, about the same pace, about the same pace, 1758 for those three miles. And then four times 200 again in 36. Weeks 13, so I went from three miles to now uh, four times one mile of one minute rest. And then the next week after that, I did two times two miles with two minute rest. So basically just doing more running at threshold pace, make, getting those intervals a little bit longer. Uh, and you can see that my I was hitting that, 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 that pace range I wanted pretty well, like that 5.59 to 6.07 uh, pace. Uh, one last tempo run on week, the end of week 15 was just three miles straight through. I'd all, I was already in week 15 tapering a little bit for my goal 5K race. The goal 5K race was actually the Monday of week 17. So it's not actually on this calendar. All right, so let's look at the other, the last, the last uh, missing ingredient to this puzzle. I also was doing a lot of 5k goal paced intervals and so for a sub 17 5k goal that was 81.5 per 400 meters and so I started doing these in week 11 alongside with the the threshold runs and I started off the way I progressed the 5k goal pace intervals is I started off with 400 meter repeats and then I increased the distance of of those repeats so in the first week, I did uh, three sets of four by 400. So that's 12 400s or about three miles worth of 5K pace running. I ended up averaging a little bit faster than goal pace, 80 seconds per 400. Then the next week, I was able to do the same amount of running. So in this case, eight times 600 meters or th you know, about three miles with the same pace, two, two minutes per 600. The rest for um, the 400s, I believe, was a 100 meter jog. And then the rest for the 600s, I believe, was a 200 meter jog. All right, so then after the next week, I, I went up to six by 800. And so now I'm doing 800s at goal 5K pace. Hit right about exactly goal pace, 242.5 for 800. The last, work, the last 5K goal pace workout was just a tune-up workout. On, when, on the Wednesday of week 16. And so I was already, you know, four days out from my uh, 5K time trial. So I just did, basically I cut the volume. Same workout, but cut the volume, four by 600. Uh, I did a couple of 200s afterwards as well. And all right, so the only thing that's left here is the time trials, right? So I ended up doing a couple time trials here, not just the one goal time trial. I did a time trial at the end of week 14 basically going into my taper. I just wanted to see where I was without, you know, that last little bit of sharpening. And I ended up running a little bit slower than I would like to at the time. I ended up running 1728. I have a video for that race, uh, 1728 5K on, at, the, at the end of week 14. Basically, check out my video, how to get over a bad race. Um, I'll put a link in the description down below. It, so, so, if, so watch that video. Um, basically, I, I, I talk about how that race went. And then the next week, as my really hard, you know, last workout of this cycle, you want to do sort of your last hard workout about 10 days before your goal pace, uh, your goal race. And so for me, that was the Thursday of week 15. And I did a two mile time trial. So all out, all out two mile time trial is a really good, uh, workout really good vo2 max you know workout it's really basically you're running all out for 10 you know 10 11 10 or 11 minutes that's a that's a vo2 max test basically vo2 max is basically how much oxygen your body can um, process you know can, can you know, how much oxygen your lungs can take in how much oxygen can be transported to all your muscles and then how much oxygen you can actually use so it's like your max oxygen utilization and basically the more aerobically fit you are the higher your vo2 max is going to be um and 
you know, it's, it's a really good indicator of your two mile or your 5K race ability. So this was basically an all out effort, um, two miles. I just wanted to make sure I could run two miles faster than 1056, which is my, which is the sub 17 5K pace. I ended up running 1048. So that gave me a little bit of confidence going into the last race. And then finally, for the last race on uh, the Monday, week 17, not on the calendar, um, I ran 17.06. Check out the race recap for that video. I'll put that down in the link below. Um, so I was a few seconds short of breaking 17 in the 5K, um, but I did have massive improvement over the course of these 16 weeks. Because at the beginning of this training plan, I could only do one mile in 513. Probably wasn't gonna be much faster than 18 minutes for 5K at that time. All right, so let's summarize the uh, training calendar. So this is a training plan, basically. It's 5K centric. And if you're interested in training for the 5K and you wanna see how this is put together, you know, that's why I'm doing this. I'm just showing you how I put this, this thing together. And also, if you're wondering if you're close to sub 17 in the 5K, what does somebody who runs, you know, 1706, what, what do they run for their training? What kind of workout paces they do, are they doing? Well, I'm, I'm showing you that as well. All right, so just quick review, quick recap. I started off with four weeks of easy aerobic base training, just easy mileage, easy runs. Um, after two weeks, I started adding some strides twice a week, and I just built up to my my uh, my max mileage that I was gonna hold for this training cycle, 45 miles per week. And then after that, I, did, I started adding some marathon pace tempo runs um, and some critical velocity intervals, so not extremely difficult training it's very sustainable you can do this you know week after week after week and it's not going to wear you down too much but it is it is going to make you a lot fitter and so you can see the evidence of that like in week 10 i ran that time trial i went from 513 for one mile to 10 11 for 3k that's about a 10 second improvement over the course of a 3k because the 513 mile is worth about a 10 20 in the 3k so after six weeks of that marathon pace tempo training and the critical velocity training, I started to add some threshold tempo tempos. So threshold tempo running at lactic threshold, your one hour race pace. And then I started adding some 5K goal pace intervals. So this is where we're hitting that, you know, what's called VO2 max. And we're doing these hard intervals, not a lot of rest. Um, and you're really just stressing um, both your aerobic ability, but also you're getting, you're going anaerobic for a lot of this as well, right? So the 5K, um, I believe it's about 90% aerobic, but that means it's also 10% anaerobic. So you've got to be comfortable, you've got to be comfortable running with a lot of, um, a lot of lactate in your in your muscles and a lot of like acid, acidosis, a lot of acid buildup. So when you're when you're when you're um, when you're running really hard and you're going past lactic threshold and you're going anaerobic, you produce a lot of you know waste products of that anaerobic metabolism and basically your your blood and your your muscles they go acidic, right? You go, they, the pH drops and you have a lot of buildup in acid and that ultimately is what causes a lot of the fatigue and reasons why you slow down in races. So anyway, I was hitting a lot of hard intervals, a lot of th lactic threshold tempo runs, some faster 200s, and then you know I was doing that for about four weeks. You want to stick, you want to stick with a new training stimulus for at least four weeks before changing it up. That's how long you're gonna have to wait to see if it's working, right? That's these things take time. So four to six weeks is about how long it takes for your body to undergo any sort of like serious adaptation. And so that's why I waited, you know, I did a time trial week 10 and then I started doing a time trial, you know, four to six weeks later. I did a 5K on week 14, uh, just a rust buster really and just trying to see where I was at. Um, and then a two mile time trial on week 15. 
All right, so finally to conclude, I wanna talk about how I plan to improve. All right, so I, I, I still wanna break 17 into 5K, obviously. It didn't, it didn't happen in this training cycle. I, I, I strongly believe that it's gonna happen uh, sometime later in 2021. But in order to get better at the 5K, and the 5K still is my long-term goal, I would love to be able to PR in the 5K again at some point in my life. Uh, my PR is now 10 years old, um, 16, 17, so well under 17. I, I, need to, I need to get back under 17. And so to do that, um, I'm only running 45 miles a week right now uh, as my max, so I need to start running some more mileage. Um, that's really going to improve my aerobic ability. Uh, so I want to be able to hold 50 miles per week for the next cycle. In the past, for me personally, I know that I see a lot of improvement when I get over 50 miles a week. So that's what I'm going to try to aim for the next uh, cycle. In the short term, I want to get back to doing lawn runs again. So for me, I'm going to define a lawn run as any run that's greater than 90 minutes in duration. So I'm gonna add that new type of workout into my training plan. You can see that I didn't do lawn runs in this plan. And so in order to add the lawn runs into my training, I don't wanna compromise my recovery. So I'm gonna use a 10 day training cycle instead of a seven day training cycle. So instead of doing two workouts in a lawn run every week, I'll be doing two workouts in a lawn run every 10 days. And so that should give me a little bit more flexibility uh, with my recovery. And then lastly, my next project will, for the next you know three to four months, will be to improve my speed. I gotta get faster. Um, I, so I wanna improve my one mile time and my 3K times. I think that this is gonna be a huge factor in, in, in getting my 5K down below 17 again. So my goals for the next cycle will be a sub five mile, and I wanna get a PR in the 3K, so that's gonna mean having to run faster than 945. All right, so that's gonna do it for this video. Um, if you liked it, hit the like button, comment down below if uh, you have any questions about my training plan, any of the workouts I did, if you, have any, if you have any questions about how to train for a 5K. Uh, if you like this video, please also subscribe. Run Energized.